Hello and welcome to this third tutorial in animating a camera in After Effects. So far we have created a hierarchy for resolving the X, Y and Z rotation of our camera by using parented null objects. And each one of these null objects are in a specific order so that we end up with an animation that actually still looks good. And we have noted that if we change the order in which the parenting takes place that we will change the behavior of the whole scene and end up with something that's unwatchable or unviewable and doesn't work in quite the way we expect. So we've ended up knowing that we need to have Z rotation at the bottom followed by X rotation followed by Y. Our camera is parented to Z, Z is parented to X, X is parented to Y. And now what we want to do is add a controller layer so that we don't have to keep on burying into each one of these layers to make sure that we animate the right thing because it's very easy to get the wrong one unless we have a different layer to do all the controllers. So we're going to create another null object to do a controller. So either we can go to layer, new, null object, or we can mash our fists, control, alt, shift, y, command, option, shift, y, and create the new null object. And we're gonna call this our controls. Hit return on the keyboard and call it controls. Okay, now on this particular one, I'm going to shut down this second viewer now. We don't need that. On this particular one, we'll open it up and we'll get see our effects controls. We're actually going to add some controls so that we can control these three rotations. Now, to be able to control rotation, there are actually specific effects that are given for controlling these bits and pieces via linking or expressions. Um, in our case, it's going to be an expression, but a very simple expression. It's just going to be a link. We're not going to need to type any text at all. So we can select our layer, and we need to add three effects. We need to add three rotation effects. So we go to Effects, Expression Controls, and then we're looking for what's called an Angle Control. Click on the Angle Control, and then what we need to do is select it and Control D or Command D twice to duplicate it. And then we can rename all of these. So if we rename the top one, we can call that Y, and you might then want to also call that Orbit to give it a bit more of a clear name because we know that Y is going to orbit around our text. And then we might want to say, name the second one, hit return, and call that X. And we might want to call that a pan because that's going to pan over the top or underneath if we want of our scene. And the last one, we can rename Z, and we might just want to call that Tilt. Or whatever name means something to you. I'm no camera expert, but you might find that these names mean something. And then simply what we need to do is select each appropriate layer and link the effect. So let's open up Y. Actually, the first thing we'll do is we'll lock this layer in place. So if you click this toggle lock, it doesn't matter what layer you select now, that will always stay in place. So let's select Y, and let's open it up. And let's actually take off the animation. So let's bring this back to the beginning and take off the animation because we're going to do the animation via this control. And now we need to add an expression to Y. It's very simple. You alt click or on the PC, option click on the Mac on the stopwatch next to Y rotation. And you end up with these little controls at the bottom and a bit of text. We don't need to type anything. What we need to do is grab hold of this pick whip here and pull it up and drop it on the angle for Y orbit. So when you let go on the word angle, you'll see that the text will change in that text box. It's saying that in this composition, there is a layer called controls, which is this layer here. And then that layer, there is an effect which is named Y orbit, which is this effect here. And the control of this effect is angle. So it is saying that this is now controlled by whatever we do here. And if I just move this around, you'll see, as I start to scrub, that actually the orbiting is taking place up now by this particular control, which I can simply reset. So I don't need to worry about this layer anymore. It is being controlled. And when you see red text like this, it's telling you that it is being controlled by something else. An expression has linked it, and something else is controlling it. You can't actually control it. Because if I actually scrub it, you'll see that it makes absolutely no difference to the text. And when I let go, it goes straight back to the beginning. So that's now closed that one. So I can close that one, and I can lock it or I can shy it. I don't even need to see this layer anymore. So shy it by clicking little shy guy. Make sure shy guy is shied up here and then shy it there. And it's gone. 
So now we need to do X or pan. So if we open up the X, go down, we can take off the animation by clicking on the stopwatch and then Alt click, Option click, take our pick wick and drag it up to the angle under X pan. And again, it says in this composition, there is a layer called controls, which has an effect on it, which is called X pan. And what is controlling this particular parameter is the angle. So that's now done. Hit return on your numpad if you want to accept it. You can't push ordinary return. That'll just add a layer. And now if we move this, we can see that it's doing the tilt. It's sort of panning over the top. Reset. And then the final one we need to do, again, we can minimize that layer. We can lock it and we can shy it. So it disappears. Oh, wrong one. And we can shy it. And then the last one we need to do is Z. So we can open up Z, which I'm calling tilt. We can turn off the animation by just clicking on the stopwatch. And then we can Alt click on PC, Option click on Mac, take the pick whip, drag it up to angle where it says Z tilt, hit return on our numpad, and then have a look at it. There is tilt. If I start to pull it, it tilts sideways one way and the other slightly off angle but there you go okay so that has now set up the animation controller so I can actually turn off this Z rotation I can lock that and I can shy it I don't need to see it anymore all I need to see are my controls because my controls can now be animated in the normal way the stopwatch is against all of these angles and I can animate the orbit the pan and the tilt so let's just quickly do that let's animate all three of them so turn on all three stopwatches Start off by doing our rotation, so we can go to the end of our comp now. Now we set the stopwatches, and we know that we want to do one complete orbit, so hit one and return. And we know that we want it to pan, so it pretty much pans completely over the top. And then we need it to tilt all the way around, so it's about in the right place. Okay, and we can see that these have opened up in a very uniform way. So now we can just scrub backwards and forwards through our animation and we can see that we've got what we wanted a controllable and predictable animation by using these controls and rather than having to dig into each individual layer here are the controls and we can quickly get in and find them and of course we can always select the controls layer hit U and we've got all the keyframes and we can select those and we can easy ease them or whatever we want to do to make them look good so that's how we can create individual controls for the three rotation properties by animating each one on a separate null and then taking all of those and linking them to simple to use effects on a control layer. But we can still go into our camera and we can still make some changes to our camera if we feel we need to. So I'm at the beginning of my animation, I might want to actually start my camera from a slightly different perspective, move it backwards and forwards, set things up a little bit better. So I can still change things on my camera even move the point of interest up or down. It hasn't changed my animation, my animation's still in place, but I'm just moving where the camera starts from. And of course, it will affect where the camera finishes. All I've done is change the position of the camera from where it starts and finishes. One final thing that you can do once you actually have your control layer is that you can use the control layer to determine your point of interest. So if you have another item that you want the camera to revolve around or to pan to or move to, you can actually use the control layer itself as a way of directing the camera's point of view. So if I unshy my layers so you can see them all, at the moment I have my Y rotation as the top of my hierarchy. However, if I was to take my pick whip and I was to parent it to the control layers, can't do it because it's locked, so I'll unlock the layer. Take my pick whip and parent it to the control layers. The control layer is now the head or the top of my hierarchy, and everything else is parented to it. So where the control layer goes, there my camera rig and my camera will follow. So I actually have another series of text and lights that I copied across earlier. So if I just turn the eyeballs on for those, you can see them over here. If I just do a quick orbit, hit my camera tool and right mouse, you can see that I've got another text over here. Now at the moment, as you can see, my nulls, which I've left on deliberately so you can see them, but once you've actually set up your camera rig, you probably don't want to have these showing anymore and you can just turn the eyeballs off for them. So let's turn everything off except my control layer. So at the moment, my control layer which needs to be 3D, sorry, I'll make that 3D layer. At the moment, my control layer is looking at the text. However, 
Because this is the top of my hierarchy, everything is revolving around the anchor point of this particular layer. So if partway through my animation I change where this null is, the camera and the whole camera rig will follow. Okay, so let me just reset bits and pieces. We'll just do this with an orbit at the moment. So I'm going to reset tilt, turn it off. I'm going to reset pan and turn it off. And I'm going to reset orbit and turn it off. So at the moment I've got no animation. Now, what I want to do is I want to animate this so that it starts a rotation around this one and finishes a rotation around this one. And to do that, all I simply need to do is animate the position of this layer, the controls layer. So I can select the controls layer, hit P for position, so you actually have the position stopwatch. Now, I don't want to change the position of this until I actually want to start to move across. And then I need to create a whole keyframe for where it is and then shift it across to where we want it to be. So let's say halfway through the animation is where we want the animation to start. So we hit the stopwatch and it's saying, OK, so effectively for this first half of our timeline, you stay in this place. However, from this point, I'm warning you that change is going to come. And then very quickly over five frames, so very quickly, we can actually change the position of this. So we can shift it along to the other text. So at the moment it seems that all I've done is I've created a very simple animation. But if you notice that the camera has come along with it. So what if the camera is rotating? So let's do a rotation animation. So we'll do the orbit tool up here, click the stopwatch for orbit, and then go to the end of our animation and let's give it, let's say two complete rotations. It might be a bit quick, but that'll probably do the trick. Now let's see, hit the home key to get to the beginning, and now let's see what it looks like by dragging through our timeline. So it's going to start orbiting around text, and it's staying there because the null object is staying there. And then it carrying on for its second rotation about there, but now the null object is moving right away across to the other piece of text, and it finishes off rotating around our second piece of text. So we are using the position of the control layer as our anchor point for the camera rig as a whole. It's just a simple technique to be able to shift your whole rig across by using the control layers at the top of a hierarchy, so it does need to be parented to the Y layer before it, and it does need to be a 3D layer, but once that's in place, then you have something that you can work with that can move around to multiple points to look at lots of different pieces simply by changing the position of the control layer with the whole camera rig doing its own thing almost independently but just following wherever this control layer happens to go. Well, my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful, that you'll be able to use this simple camera rig approach to be able to do quite a lot of decent animation, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.